Hello fellow coffee botherers. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing four key tips for making better espresso using the cheapest home espresso machines. So if you've got a very low cost home espresso machine with a porter filter like this, for example, Swan Retro, Cookworks, Grand Gaja, Gaja Viva, DeLonghi Dedica, or any other similarly priced cheap espresso machine, this video is for you. In this video on dialing in espresso, I explained that that video was for people using traditional espresso machines with standard baskets, and that you can't really dial in in the same way using pressurized baskets. So just to explain what I'm talking about with standard or pressurized baskets. Traditional baskets are like this. They're full of holes. It's basically a coarse mesh filter. Traditional espresso machines, the more premium home barista espresso machines and commercial espresso machines you'll see in coffee shops have standard baskets like this. They produce the best results in the right hands. They give the barista the control over the extraction. Pressurized baskets like this are also known as dual walled baskets and they've got lots of holes on one side, on the inside where the coffee goes, and just one hole on the bottom. Or some machines actually have a standard basket, but the pressurized bit is in the porter filter itself. While home barista machines and commercial traditional machines produce better results in the right hands, the idea of pressurized baskets or pressurized porter filter machines is that they produce satisfactory results in any hands. You'll hear some people saying pressurized baskets are no good, and I've probably said that myself in the past, but this is when we're talking about home barista espresso. If you're getting into the home barista hobby, then you'll probably want to put your pressurized baskets in a drawer somewhere. You're probably not gonna use them. And some machines, including the Sage or Breville machines and the Gadget Classic Pro come with both standard baskets and pressurized baskets so the user can decide how they want to use the machine. If you're not interested in espresso as a hobby though and you just want an espresso machine in your home as means to an end, you just want a cheap and easy way to produce espresso at home, then I think pressurized baskets are great. With traditional baskets we do what's generally referred to as dialing in, which is to tweak things, mainly the grind, to get as close to perfection as possible with the shot. With pressurized baskets, you can't really do this, not quite in the same way, but I'm gonna give you four ways to improve your espresso with these kinds of machines. And while any of these four on their own will improve your shots, if you do all four, you'll exponentially improve your espresso. So I'd recommend all four of these for the best results. Tip number one, upgrade your coffee. Many people think that if they buy the biggest known brands of coffee from the supermarket or online, big well-known brands, who I'm not gonna mention because I don't wanna get sued, including the big cafe chains, whose coffee is available from supermarkets, are among the best. And best is a very subjective thing, of course, but what you need to know is that there are two very different markets for coffee. There's freshly roasted coffee that you buy from small batch roasters or from specialist online retailers, for example, who sell coffee from small batch roasters and there's commodity coffee and I'm not going to get into too much detail on this here as this is a big subject and I know I sometimes waffle on too much and I go away from the main point so I'll do another video going into more detail on this for now just know that I'm recommending that you buy freshly roasted coffee beans if you're in the UK try my coffee at the coffee works cworks.co.uk and use a discount code yt25 for 25% off your first order and then after that use the code coffee botherers for a permanent 10% discount the coffee I sell is high quality freshly roasted coffee beans. Also, you can go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash coffee roasters to find your local roaster. If you're not in the UK, just jump on Google and look for coffee roasters near you or that deliver in your area and you'll probably find more than one. Another couple of tips related to upgrading your coffee. Choose an espresso roast profile. Small batch roasters sell coffee for a wide range of brew methods, but for home espresso machines with pressurized baskets, you really need something within the espresso roast side of things. Definitely not medium or omni roast. Use the same coffee, at least for a while, so you have plenty of time to adjust things with the same coffee bean. And by the way, keep in mind that when you see things like chocolate, caramel, fruity, and so on, these are just tasting notes, similar to what you'd see on a bottle of wine, and this isn't flavorings. So if you're choosing a coffee from a roaster or speciality coffee website, it's worth looking at the flavor notes and going for one that you think you might like. And with espresso profiles, you'll commonly find chocolate and caramel notes, nutty notes, and so on. But remember, these are gonna be subtle taste notes. They're not gonna taste like they've been flavored. 
Similarly, when you see in the taste notes that a coffee is sweet, this isn't sweet in the traditional sense, as if you've shoveled a few sugars into your cup, it's just a subtle flavor note. And if you're relatively new to fresh coffee, if you usually drink instant coffee, pod coffee, and so on, you might not pick up any of these flavor notes, at least not straight away, but given time, you'll probably find your palate develops and you do start to be able to detect some of these more subtle taste descriptors. You're not necessarily gonna like the first coffee you try, so just buy a bag, see if you like it, and if you do, stick to that for a while. If the roaster is local and welcomes visitors or as a coffee shop, you'll be able to taste before you buy. Tip number two, grind your own coffee beans. If you're buying freshly roasted beans, that's one thing, but if you're also grinding your own, even better. At the Coffee Works, we grind coffee as we're bagging it up, and many others will do that too. So it's about as fresh as pre-ground can be, but coffee starts to lose its vibrancy the minute it's ground. So the best time to grind coffee is always gonna be just before you brew it. The good news is that with pressurized basket machines, you don't need to spend a fortune on expensive espresso capable grinders. If you can and you want to, then great, it will improve your shop potential and it will future-proof your setup, meaning that if you have a higher level grinder, this will probably pair well with other espresso machines if you do decide to upgrade your machine in the future. But if you don't have the budget to invest in a decent espresso capable grinder, spending between 50 to 100 quid will get you a grinder that will work fine with pressurized baskets. For all the options and the differences in between them, see coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash grinders. Tip number three, weigh your dose. I know this probably sounds like we're moving into the home barista territory now, but just stick with me for a sec, as this is much easier than it sounds. One of the key variables of espresso is the dose, which just means the amount of ground coffee that you put into your basket. If you use the same dose each time by weighing it rather than using, for example, a scoop or time in it, which isn't quite as precise, you're gonna get more consistent results. The instructions for your machine will probably tell you what dose your basket is made for. If not, you should be able to discover this by having a quick Google. Just weigh the porter filter, dose coffee into the basket, which just means put ground coffee into it, and put in the desired amount for your basket. Probably six to nine grams, for example, for a single basket, or around 14 to 19 grams for a double basket, depending on your machine and your baskets. This way, you're using the same amount of coffee each time, and this is a key variable. As I've said, if you're using scoops or if you're using grinding time, that's nowhere near as precise. You don't need to spend a fortune. If you don't already have kitchen scales, just buy a cheap set of scales. If you wanna spend a bit more, I'd recommend the My Way Barista scales and see this video I did on them. They're really, really good for the money. Tip number four, flush. One of the main issues a lot of the cheaper espresso machines have is temperature instability. And to be fair to them, this is an issue that some of the not so cheap machines share. And flushing is something that I'd recommend even if you do have a much more expensive espresso machine. For the first shot, if you're making more than one, add flush water through the group with the porter filter inserted and the cup below so that you're warming the porter filter and the group and the cup at the same time. For the next shot, if you're pulling more than one, you can just press the shot button and let hot water flow into the glass or cup as the porter filter will have been warmed by the last shot. Just flush the same amount each time. If you're pulling your shots into a small shot glass, I'd say fill the glass. If you're using a bigger cup, just flush for around eight to 10 seconds and do this before each shot. If you do this, you'll be pulling your shots at a much more consistent brew temperature. And that's it, do these four things together and I think you'll be very impressed with the results. I'm now gonna give you four more suggestions for anyone who wants to improve their espresso even more. These aren't as important as the first four, but if you incorporate these or just some of them into your espresso making routine, you'll be in for even bigger improvements to your home espresso. Bonus tip number one, tamp your coffee. Many people will say you don't need to tamp coffee in pressurized baskets. And I think whether the tamp itself is beneficial will depend on whether it's a pressurized basket or a pressurized porter filter as they do work slightly differently. But in any case, if you do a relatively light tamp with the main focus being on ensuring a level surface, I think it's probably worth it just to level the surface and it's really quick and simple to do. Just put your thumb and forefinger over the sides of the tamper and porter filter so you can check its level and then push until it stops moving. You don't need to put loads of energy, loads of effort into it. If you have a plastic scoop tamper thing that your machine came with, just have a look online to see if you can find a proper tamper for your machine, as tamping with the plastic scoop tamper things isn't particularly pleasant. Bonus tip number two, tweak the grind. If you're grinding your own beans, 
I'd start out with any of the grind settings on your grinder. As long as you get espresso from the porter filter, that's fine. But once you've pulled a few shots, I'd recommend small adjustments in either direction and just trying to determine whether the shot tastes the same or better or worse. Don't expect big improvements from one shot to the next. Just make slight adjustments with the aim being to gradually improve the extraction over a period of time. And if you find you've gone too far in one direction, go back the other way slightly until you're back in the sweet spot. This might be difficult at first, but you'll probably find that your palate improves over time and you start to be able to tell how well extracted the shot is. Think of this as like gradually adjusting the focus on a camera. If you go a bit too far one way, you'll go out of focus. If you go a bit too far the other way, you go out of focus again. But when you get it right in the sweet spot, you're in perfect focus. The easiest way to describe this focusing in is to imagine sourness at one end and bitterness at the other end. This can be tricky as it's quite common to get these mixed up. So to make it easier, imagine lemon juice sourness at one end and dark chocolate bitterness on the other end. If you like the way the shot tastes, do nothing. Don't try to fix what isn't broken. If you don't like the shot, ask yourself, do I dislike this shot because it's on the sour lemon juice side of things or do I dislike this shot because it's on the bitter dark chocolate side of things? And then just slightly adjust the grind in the appropriate direction, just like focusing a camera. You're never going to get the elusive god shot from a machine like this, but over time you should be able to get what you find to be the best possible extraction from the coffee bean you're using with your machine. If it's too bitter, dark chocolate, then this is a sign of over extraction. And the only thing you can really do about this with pressurized basket machines is to try tweaking the grind to make it more coarse. If it's too sour, lemon juice, this is a sign of under extraction. And this can be down to the beans. If they're medium roast or omni roast, then they might just not be suitable for your machine. So go for an espresso roast profile instead, a darker roast. But you can also try to focus in slightly using the camera analogy by just going a bit finer with the grind and trying to extract a bit more from the bean. If you want to do this properly, then really you need a standard basket machine and you need to move towards a home barista side of things. And that's fine. Many people start off with pressurized baskets and then catch the home barista bug. But it is possible to at least do a bit of dialing in this way if you have a grinder. When you're adjusting the grind finer, you should only do this while you're grinding in case there are any bits of coffee being stuck in between the burrs. But adjusting more coarse without the grinder running is fine as you're moving the burrs further apart. Bonus tip three, don't burn your milk. If you're making milkies, cappuccino, latte, flat white, etc., only heat your milk to the maximum 65 degrees Celsius or about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. If you heat it over that, you'll lose some of the sweetness of the milk. And the same generally goes for alternatives to oat milk, soy milk, etc. If you want hotter milkies, preheat your cup more. You'll be surprised what a difference that makes. Bonus tip number four, hold off the sugar. You might add sugar and or other stuff out of habit. You might not need to sweeten your coffee that way if you're following the other tips I'm sharing in this video. So just try not masking the flavors with sugar and see what you think. Maybe try holding off the sugar for just a few weeks and see what happens. You might find that you start to detect flavors in your coffee that you didn't previously because they were been masked by the sweetness of the sugar. And there you go. If you have a cheaper espresso machine, follow these tips and you should be making much better quality espresso at home. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to click the like button. Thanks. Physicists have discovered something called time crystals, which could potentially make some form of time travel possible. And this has absolutely nothing to do with clicking the like button. True, but click it anyway. Thanks. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? Don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere of my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.